exploration geological features and genetic models of mineral deposits introduction mineral deposits are natural concentrations of one or more mineral com commodities they may be trumped or deposits if they reach levels where economic extraction is viable they form as a result of many geological processes but they form within specified geological settings the geological processes that may concentrate minerals include number one fractional crystallization of magmas number two release of volatiles from a crystallizing magma number three magmatic interaction with host rocks Number four, metamorphic reactions producing fluid. Number fifth, chemical changes in circulating heated groundwater. Number six, organic interactions. Number seven, weathering. Ideally, mineral deposit types should reflect how the mineral deposits was actually formed. And in this case, one might be able to use the term genetic model. Prior to the 20th century, models for the formation of mineral deposits were subject to the often polarized views of either Platonists, all deep igneous origins, or Neptunists, all sedimentary origins, theories for the origin of rocks, or Genesis formation processes. Events 1993 divides ore forming processes into the four main categories. Number one, internal processes. Number two, hydrothermal processes. Number three, metamorphic processes. And number four, superficial, uh, superficial processes. The former three processes relate to subsurface phenomena while the last of these obviously covers those processes occurring at the Earth's surface. Hydrothermal should be further subdivided into number one, magmatic hydrothermal, number two, metamorphic hydrothermal, number three, diagenetic hydrothermal, number four, surface hydrothermal, to refine the nature of the hydrothermal processes. Further qualifying terms such as syngenetic and epigenetic are useful in discussing the genesis of ore deposits. Syngenetic is used for mineral deposits that are interpreted to have formed at the same time as the enclosing rocks. Epigenetic is used for mineral deposits that formed later than the enclosing rocks. And as a result, the deposits are found as masses, layers, or disseminations that are seen to cut or overprint the original rock. Hypogene. Hypogene is another useful term used to describe mineralization formed by processes deep in the earth. Supergene refers to processes superimposed on original mineralization key deposit forming processes number one orthomagmatic deposits orthomagmatic deposits are those that form from primary magmatic processes that is cooling and crystallizing magmas they are hosted within the rocks from which they formed Therefore, they are by definition also syngenetic. Deposits may form as a result of solid phases crystallizing as a differentiate, differentiate as the magma cools, minerals crystallizing from the enriched residual fluids formed as magma cools and crystallizes, the formation of a sulfide melt that developed by immiscibility from a coexisting silicate melt, where a magma transports xenolithic or xenocrystic phases that it has picked up on its passage through the Earth's crust. 
Number two, hydrothermal deposits. Hydrothermal deposits are those that literally form from hot water. Hydrothermal fluids circulated through the Earth's crust. Hydrothermal fluids may have their origin in igneous protons or from metamorphic reactions deep in the crust, but they can also be the result of deeply circulated and heated meteoric or seawater, or they may be the release of trapped water from sedimentary basins undergoing diagenetic change. Tracking the original source for this range of fluids is now largely possible using studies of fluid inclusions, trapped in minerals, and the use of range of isotopic markers. 2.1. Magmatic Hydrothermal Magmatic hydrothermal fluids form as a body of magma cools and crystallizes. In some cases, the magmatic system may simply be a passive source of heat that drives the circulation of fluids exotic to the magmas through adjacent fractured crust into which the magma is in intruding. 2.2. Metamorphic hydrothermal. Metamorphic hydrothermal fluids form as metamorphism results in mineral chemical processes that may release volatiles often dominated by water, but which may include gases such as carbon dioxide. 2.3. Diagenetic hydrothermal. Diagenetic hydrothermal fluids are formed as pore waters trapped during sedimentation, then loosely bounded to clays and other minerals, which are released during compaction and lithification. This process may develop on a large scale in a sedimentary basin undergoing barrier and lithification and is a related process to hydrocarbon generation. 2.4 Surface or seafloor hydrothermal Surface or seafloor hydrothermal fluids are generated as deeply penetrating meteoric or seawater derived waters descend and they become heated deeper in the crust. This process is particularly apparent in regions where there is elevated crustal heat flow, often where the earth's crust is being thinned. Surface upgrade, low temperature. Low temperature, less than 50 degrees centigrade, surface processes can also be responsible for the formation of economic ore deposits. Physical processes such as physical erosion, transportation, and deposition lead directly to the redistribution and accumulation of specific minerals. Such deposits are formed as a result of the differing physical and chemical behavior of the minerals forming the original rock. These physical processes can be either hydraulic, water, or aeolian, wind. Weathering is also a very important ore forming process, resulting in chemical change and a redistribution of components in surface rocks by migrating solutions. The differential chemical properties of minerals at the Earth's surface and within the surface crustal interface can lead to residual upgrades or chemical dissolution and a reprecipitation mechanisms to concentrate the metal mineral of interest. In such cases, ore formation is driven by the circulation of largely meteorically derived water at the Earth's surface, although similar analogous processes can take place on the seafloor. These surface waters can dissolve components, reprecipitating them at favorable mineral sites or surface interfaces. Another process important for ore formation that is a surface phenomenon is the process of evaporation. Dissolved salt precipitate as water is lost in an evaporating basin, for example or by the evaporation of water from the ground surface due to heat energy from the sun. Thank you.
please subscribe, like, and share.